Dear friends, as our peace gong calls us together on this first Sunday after Pentecost, known in the church calendar as Trinity Sunday, we remember that in one of our partner churches in Korea on each and every Sunday, the gong is sounded and those gathered begin by praying for peace in our world and in our hearts. Let us be in that same spirit of prayer for peace guided by the risen Christ who sets that path before us. And as we gather in worship on this holy day, you're invited to have your bread and juice ready for communion later in the service and to light candles to create your own worship space. Let us prepare our hearts and minds now to worship God. Grace to you and peace welcome on this day that God has set aside for us to give thanks and praise in community together. Today is our Memorial Day Sabbath when we remember those who have gone before us, particularly in the service of freedom, peace, justice, and love for all people. And most of all, today is a day when we remember who we are and whose we are as God's people seeking to be all that we are created to be in the light of Christ's love. Let us come now to worship and sing to our God, the omnipotent, all-merciful, all-righteous, who sets before us the ways of living in peace with remembrance and hope. Amen. share responsively in our greeting. We come this day remembering, remembering those who have gone before us living lives of sacrifice and love. We come this day revisioning, revisioning our own lives that we might give gifts of hope and peace to this world. We come this day renewing, renewing our faith in God, the source of life and love, in Christ, the center of memory and hope, and in the Holy Spirit, the power of strength and challenge. Thanks be to our God, who empowers us this day and always. Amen. And let us pray together. O holy God, we give thanks for your renewing presence as we come before you this day. We acknowledge to you, to ourselves, and to one another that we have not always lived our faith, shared our hope, or reached out with love. We have done selfish deeds and have left undone deeds which could have made a difference in the lives of those around us. We have failed to speak and act for peace, freedom, and justice in our world. Have mercy on us, we pray. Forgive our sins and change our lives that we may live in your way of peace. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Friends, it is in Christ's name that we are forgiven and given the strength and courage to begin again. We have the assurance of our faith that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. The past is received, the present is possible, the future opens before us with hope and new life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs>
Pariso will now share our scripture reading for today. The scripture readings today for this Memorial Day Sabbath focus us on peace as we remember and honor all those who gave their lives that peace might be a reality in our world. We hear the words from the Gospel of Luke, how when Jesus was born, the angel declared to the frightened shepherds, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We hear the words of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew saying, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. We hear the words of Jesus from the Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Peace I leave you with. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And we hear Jesus' words as he entered the city of Jerusalem. Oh, if only you knew the things that make for peace. May God bless our living these holy words. Amen. Will you pray with me? Most holy God, may the words of my mouth, the reflections of all of our hearts, be faithful to the readings of the gospel for today. Amen. Today is our day for remembering, because memories give deep meaning to life. Today is our day for remembering those who have served our country. And it was a special reminder as I prepared for the memorial service and committal for Ralph Travers recently. And we honored the memories of Ralph that were so uplifting. And we remember that he often would light candles on our altar for this Memorial Day Sunday. His spirit is with us this day, especially. Ralph was a Marine, a proud veteran who served on the U.S. Saratoga and a plank owner. And I have to admit, I had no idea what a plank owner was until I looked it up and it said, an individual who was a member of the crew of a ship when that ship was placed in commission. As I thought about Ralph's serving as a very proud Marine, I remembered a story from another Memorial Day that one of you had sent to me. And in honor of Ralph Travers today, this story bears repeating. It's a story told in the first person by a Marine. And I share his words just as he told this story. He said, as I came out of the supermarket that sunny day, pushing my cart of groceries toward my car, I saw an elderly man with a, the hood of his car up and a lady sitting inside the car with the door open. The man was looking at the engine. I put my groceries away in my car and continued to watch this older gentleman from about 25 feet away. I saw a young man in his early 20s with a grocery bag in his arm walking toward the older man. The old gentleman saw him coming too and took a few steps toward him. I saw this older gentleman point to the open hood and say something. The young man put his grocery bag into what looked like a brand new Cadillac Escalade and he then turned back to the old man and I heard him yell at this older man saying, you shouldn't even be allowed to drive a car at your age. And then with a wave of his hand, he got in his car, peeled rubber out of that parking lot. I saw the older gentleman pull out his handkerchief, mop his brow as he went back to his car and again looked at the engine. He then went to his wife and spoke with her. He appeared to tell her it would be okay. I had seen enough and I approached the older man. He saw me coming and stood straight. And as I got near him, I said, looks like you're having a problem. He smiled sheepishly, quietly nodded his head. I looked under the hood myself and I knew whatever the problem was, it was beyond me. Looking around, I saw a gas station up the road and I told the older man I would be right back. I drove to the station, went inside. I saw three attendants working on cars. I approached one of them and related the problem that the elderly man had with his car. I offered to pay them if they would follow me back down and help him. The older man had actually pushed the heavy car under the shade of a tree and appeared to be comforting his wife. <clears throat> when he saw us, he straightened up and thanked me for my help. As the mechanics diagnosed the problem as an overheated engine, I spoke with the elderly gentleman. When I shook hands with him earlier, he had noticed my Marine Corps ring and had commented about it, telling me that he had been a Marine too. So I asked the usual question, what outfit did you serve with? 
He said he had served with the 1st Marine Division at Guadalcanal and Okinawa. He'd been part of two of the worst battles and retired from the Corps after the war was over. As we talked, we heard the engine come on and we saw the mechanics lower the hood. They came over to us as the gentleman reached for his wallet, but was stopped by me. I told him I would just put the bill on my AAA card. He still reached for his wallet, handed me a card that I assumed had his name and address on it, and I stuck it in my pocket. We all shook hands around again, and I said my goodbyes to his wife. I then told the two mechanics that I would follow them back up to the station. Once at the station, I told them that they had interrupted their own jobs to come along with me and to help the man. I said I wanted to pay for the help, but they refused to charge me. One of them pulled out a card from his pocket, looking exactly like the card the older gentleman had given to me. Both of the men told me that they were in the Marine Corps Reserves. Once again, we shook hands all around, and as I was leaving, one of them told me I should look at the card the gentleman had given me. I said I would, and I drove off. For some reason, I had gone about two blocks when I pulled over, took the card out of my pocket, and looked at it for a long time. The name of the elderly gentleman was on the card in golden leaf, and under his name was written, Congressional Medal of Honor Society. I sat there motionless, Looking at the card and reading it over and over, I looked up from the card and smiled to no one but myself and marveled that on this day, four Marines had all come together because one of us needed help. It made me stop and think, he said. All of us are growing older. All of us want to make a difference, to make our lives count. And being connected to that older gentleman, it felt good to have stood next to greatness and courage and an honor to have been in his presence. A great story. And so, friends, this is our Memorial Day of remembering, remembering all of those who sacrificed with courage to give all of us freedom for our country and make our world a better place. Today is our day for remembering, not only to be giving thanks for those who served honorably, but also today is our holy day, a time to pray for peace and an end to hate. And our faith compels us to remember that we are called to greatness by our concern and our compassion to care for all in need, remembering that by our Easter faith and by our following in the love of Jesus Christ, we indeed will be committed and caring and compassionate and concerned about how we will make a difference with the gifts that we have been given for the days or the years that we have here on earth. We will honor the God who gives us life. We will take the memories of loved ones and the sacrifices and the courage of those who were committed to freedom and justice, integrity, truth, and peace, and go forth into each new day, each new day that is ours, so that we too will be remembered as God's faithful people. Thanks be to God for the gift of remembering, especially for the memories that give deep, deep meaning to life. Amen. Let us sing together the hymn, Let There Be Peace on Earth.
this Memorial Day Sabbath, we come with our prayers in community together. And part of our prayers on this particular day, traditionally, we remember that war is never to be glorified, but the commitment and sacrifice of lives that are lost will never be forgotten and forever honored. And we pray for the loved ones all over the world left behind to grieve the losses. And in our remembering, we must also seek to hear the voices of those whose experience of war's toll call for peace with justice. On this Memorial Day Sabbath, <clears throat> let us take time to remember and keep open our hearts and minds as we come into the spirit of prayer. <clears throat> First, we will center our eyes on the altar as we light, have lighted candles already, and they are burning in memory and honor of those lost in war and the battle also against COVID and all of the losses that we have experienced over the past year. And we simply continue to pray for peace. Our God is the God of every day, yesterday, today, tomorrow, calling us to remember as a form of resurrection. And we remember those whose sacrifice of life is resurrected this day out of the ashes of battle. We come today once again remembering those from this our country, from 1775 to the present time, from the Revolutionary War, over 50,000 lost their lives. From the War of 1812, 2,000 in all. From the Mexican-American War, 17,400 killed and wounded. From the Civil War, the most lives lost in wars between the states of this country. North and South, human gifts of creation. So many, and we come remembering. From the Spanish-American, Filipino, and American wars, over 11,000. From World War I, 116,516 American soldiers gone, eight and a half million souls in all. And we come remembering that was to be the war that ended all war. Our God must have wept that only two decades later, later the grim beginnings of another, even more costly in lives. From World War II, we remember that 405,399 who fought from this country alone, total war dead from all sides, some 35 million with God, we come, remembering. From the Korean War, 54,246 died, 103,284 wounded, just from our country alone. Thousands upon thousands more between North and South Korea. Today, we come, remembering. From the Vietnam War, 58,209 American soldiers dead, total from all sides, three million. 434,000 men, women, and children. We come remembering them, and especially those still suffering from PTSD, and so many homeless with mental illnesses. From the 1991 Persian Gulf War, 293 combat and non-combat casualties, and yet hundreds of thousands of Gulf War veterans still suffer or have died from the effects of deadly poisoning from depleted uranium used in armaments of war and nerve gases. From the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, thousands dead, 100,000 wounded, 4 million civilians, women, men, children have died since 9-11. The number of Syrian civilians who have died since 2011 is over a half million. We pray for continued strength for all who have lost life or limbs, all suffering from post-traumatic stress, or families torn apart from inner wounds that will take lifetimes to heal. We come remembering the sacrifice and the pain. And today we have also 
a candle lighted for all of those lost or still suffering trauma from last January 6th, those lost because of racism and hatred. We remember. Also for the sacrifice of those spouses who have lost partners, for parents who have lost children, for sons and daughters who have lost parents, indeed all who have lost loved ones in the midst of all violence and terror, divisiveness and destruction and disease. With God, we remember. On this Memorial Day 2021, we also come remembering those who lost their lives in that very real battle of COVID, those no longer with us in our personal lives, in the life of our church, our community, our state, nation, and world. Millions, yet each one a gift of God's creation. Today we lift up these crushing statistics in memory and honor of each individual, all children of God, created, living, breathing, lost to so many wars and battles against hatred and disease. We commit to continue our work for peace. And let us now bow our heads as we continue to pray. O oh God, we come remembering, for remembrance is a form of resurrection. We come remembering and never ceasing our prayers for peace. Be with us all, we pray, eternal spirit. With those we name before you in silent remembrance, and with all who need you most this day, here in our faith community and all around our world, we offer our prayers in the name of the one who continues to call us to know, to understand, to struggle for the peace that is real by way of forgiveness and love, Jesus the Christ. And in that holy name, we offer the prayer that was taught to all of the followers as we say together, Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing together our response. Donna Yule will now share our mission concerns and faith community announcements. Good morning or afternoon or evening, whenever you are watching, welcome. And we are so happy to have you with us today and happy Memorial Day weekend. 
We are a faith community that lives out our faith together through all that we do, and we especially want you to know that your health, safety, and staying together are our highest priority. As part of our mission concern for the environment, we do continue to collect our Massachusetts bottles and cans. You can drop them off at any time that is convenient for you at the top of the Falver Avenue parking lot. And we will have Vacation Bible School this summer, August 2nd through 6th, for all children ages preschool through grade 6. Anyone grade 7 and above can assist Kristen. The registration form has been in my emails, or you can call the church office and a form will be sent to you. If you have any questions at all, please contact Kristen Putney directly. And please know that all COVID safety precautions will be taken as they are stated in August. Please mark your calendars for our annual meeting uh, Sunday, June 27th at 10.30 a.m. And if you need to submit your committee annual report, that is due on June 1st. The Confirmands had their first overnight retreat last weekend at Irons Homestead, and what a memorable experience that was for all involved. And we will be printing all recent graduations in my weekly emails. Please email me with the name, where you are graduating from, and your future plans. And if you would like to purchase some vegetable plants, Joanne Bennett will be at the Farver Avenue parking lot today, Sunday, May 30th, from 10, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Um, Joanne is Ralph Travers' daughter, and these are the plants that Ralph had started right before he passed away. And thank you to those who are continuing to either mail in their weekly pledge or give online. We are forever grateful for that. We know that the restrictions are being lifted and changed, and if you feel comfortable, please join us in person every Sunday at 9.30 right here in the sanctuary. We are wearing masks and socially distanced where required. The registration link is in my emails. Please enjoy your week, be safe, continue to wear your mask where asked, and please continue to reach out to others. I hope that you are in good health and spirits, and I will see you again next week. And now we will hear Cindy Pearson singing, Peace, I Leave With You, My Friends.
Dear friends, we come now to the table of our Savior, Jesus Christ, bringing all that we are and all that we hope to be. And we come remembering how on that night when Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and giving thanks, blessed it and broke it, saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this always, remembering me. In the same manner, Jesus also took the cup. And giving thanks, he said, this cup is the cup of the new covenant, which is the covenant of love. Do this also, remembering me. Ministering now in Christ's name, I invite all who live in love in that holy name to share the bread and the cup, and while partaking, Please share in singing, Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Christ, Alleluia, Alleluia, give praise to God's name. Let us pray. We give thanks, O God, that you have nourished us in this bread and cup, so that we are empowered to go forth with the love of the risen Christ in our very souls. And we pray on this holy day that you will continue to fill us with the wonder of each new day of life and empower us to be Christ's presence of love alive on this journey. Amen. Let us sing our hymn, God's Truth is Marching On. Let us share our words of parting together. God, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born into eternal life. Amen. And let us sing the World Peace Prayer as our song of parting. Lead us from death to
And now may the peace of Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us as we go forth to love and to serve and to make a difference remembering. Amen. Thank you.